grand free phone ticket Not a money in me pocket Not a send me no out But a way me ya go do Politics a pass you Let me just Not go love it Not go love it Go tell them Not go love it Not go love it A PNP Shut a labor right Not go love it Labor right Shut a PNP Not go love it Blessed, blessed the people Welcome back So peeps Today we're gonna talk about another legendary dancehall veteran. You know what I mean, people? A man who kind of changed the landscape of how dancehall music was delivered during his time of entry into dancehall music. And the artist that we're talking about, people, is none other than the legendary Ninja Man, aka Dan Gargan. The Ninja Man, whose real name is Desmond John. Ballantyne was born on the 24th of January 1966 in Anatabia, St. Mary. My name is Desmond John Ballantyne, you know. Mm -hmm. John as in John the Baptist. John and his Ben John may come but Toby and to you, you know. And people, Anatabia is one of those communities in the country area of Jamaica that is often referred to as Little Tivoli, you know. Anatabia is one of them rough country communities and you know whilst growing up ninja man was exposed to a lot you get to me as a people yeah man ninja man was a rough youth when he might grow but him always have a talent you know ninja man always loved the music him always loved entertainment he used to always love the sound clash thing and them thing there from school days any look when ninja man there a crowd that gather around him because them love him lyrics and him style and ninja man used to love for DJ and sound system all over the community. Any little party I go on, any little thing, you know, say ninja man a turn up. That was the type of individual he was at a young age. The only alternative for the poor ghetto man, you see, when the politician they hand out the gun, them give it, we use the thief. You were given that gun by a politician? You mean that gun there, you know, I don't know where that gun they come from, Emily. Why not? The young one was turning. So Ninja Man relocated from Anatobie to Kingston when he was 12 years old, you know, to stay with relatives and to pursue his dream of becoming a dancehall entertainer. Ninja Man launched his career as a DJ and a sound system known as the Black Culture Sound System. This is when Ninja Man was just 14 years old and back then ninja man's stage name used to be double ugly you get the best of people because you know the man ever arrange up and a go on somewhere you see it two times as ugly so in 1980 he joined the kilimanjaro sound system where he got the opportunity to learn from veterans like super cat and hurley b in that same year ninja man also released his debut single under the name Ugly man, you hit the best of people, yeah man. I guess Ninja Man did pro them ugly, it says it. Even though Ninja Man did pro them name Ugly Man, there was another name change to come because in the late 1980s, he changed his name to the now Ninja Man that we all know. In 1987, Ninja Man had enough experience to record and produce his first hit single. You understand, people? This single was titled Protection. A duet with Courtney Melody. The following years brought a lot of success for Ninja Man as Ninja Man worked with many producers and many other dancehall entertainers that were relevant at the time. You know, it is often said that Ninja Man is this kind of artist who built all them lyrics them on the spot in the studio. You know, back then some artists used to have to write and then them go to the studio and sing based on what they write on paper. Ninja Man was one of the first artists with actually a billion lyrics on spot and a freestyle in the studio. You understand people? So Ninja Man bring that style to the table. Yeah, when me did a work after when we start DJ, you know. Me used to start, me used to work after the things that me used to see before and things were happening in front of my eyes because really I know write lyrics. Every one of my tune them based up of something that was in the past mm -hmm. or something that lately happened. You understand, either the past or the present. Some of Ninja Man's hit songs between the year 1989 and 1992 are songs like Border Clash, Murder Them, Permit for Berry, and another song titled Above the Law. Can you imagine that people? And that song titled Above the Law is what Ninja Man used to basically reinforce himself as a violent, rude boy in a society. You know, gun teeth, gold palm front teeth, gun gargan. But as you know people, Ninja Man was a clash artist, you know what I mean? War artist. And one of Ninja Man's greatest feuds, besides the feud with Flower Gun 
and Super Cat was his feud with Shabba Rankin. And as you know, Ninja Man have Shabba Rankin as him son. Ninja Man said, him boss Shabba Rankin. Which is, Ninja Man was one who gave Shabba Rankin some highlight. You know what I mean? Ninja Man himself never did really reach where he wanted to reach as yet. But he did still give Shabba Rankin some strength because he introduced Shabba Rankin to a lot of influential people in the music industry. And Ninja Man always talk good things about Shabba Rankin. You know what I mean? So Ninja Man gives Shabba Rankin a little strength as it relates to him breakthrough. You know what I mean? You can't go around Ninja Man from that. Even though Josie will have a big part to play in a Shabba Rankin career still. And as I know, with all these different, different, with all these rivals that Ninja Man had, you know what I mean? It led to a lot of clashes between him and several different artists because as I know, Ninja Man don't portray himself as a clash artist. So because of that, Ninja Man always have to prove himself, say him at the man will have the title. So Ninja Man been in a whole lot of clashes, you know what I mean? Most of which he was successful in those clashes. Most of the clash them when Ninja Man enter and Ninja Man come out the victor because as we say Ninja Man have the ability to build some to build some dangerous lyrics on this spot. You know what I mean? You have to wonder how the man brain quicks about. I guess I just him God given talent that you get me say people, nobody can take that from Ninja Man. 1993, you know what they were? Widespread criticism of Ninja Man's Pro gun lyrics, you know what I mean? The violence where my push. You know what Jamaica already is a violent society and Ninja Man a DJ the whole of violent lyrics them. Separate and apart from that, Ninja Man added Ninja Man had his fear bit of run ins with the law. You get to mess people. Ninja Man became the subject of one and two police investigations here and there. You get to mess people. So as a result of this, you know there was a decline in the amount of performances that Ninja Man was doing. You get to me say people because society they actually start to turn against Ninja Man because them have him as a person where influence people the wrong where influence the youth them to go in the wrong direction. So Ninja Man was getting to do less stage shows and apart from that he was getting less recording opportunities. People one of the biggest problems Ninja Man had in his life, especially in the earlier part of his career, is the fact that he found himself addicted to crack, cocaine, you get me as a people. And because of that addiction, a lot of persons lose respect for him. So imagine a man hooked on crack cocaine and apart from that he might push violence. So a lot of persons in a society never really like Ninja Man for that. And because of that, Ninja Man started to get a good fight. Until in 1997, when Ninja Man actually do a next name change. He changed his name from Ninja Man to Brother Desmond. Because Ninja Man said, you what? No, no. He might go in a church. So Ninja Man started to do gospel reggae music. You know what I mean? Because Ninja Man did baptize and God in him church and say him change him life. You see me? So Ninja Man promised the fans say him done with the cocaine. And Ninja Man promised the fans say him done with the rude boy, gunman type of style. And him a deal with peace and love. I don't care whether you believe me or not, you know. Yeah. The last time he gave me life to God, holy and soul, and a Did you really? And when you not done criticize me, I couldn't take him no more. I have to come out and say, God, if I so much Christian to be, I can't take him, I walk away. But me will tell you something now. Were you really a Christian or were you just broke? What? I needed some money. Some you can't some make me broke. You think a DJ make money like me? How much do you make for a regular stage show? I, 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 I tax you one come down for me. I don't make nothing. But I wasn't a Christian. I was a man of God. What's the difference? Because Christian have a tendency to be hypocrite in the sight of God. And what are you now? When you work in the sight of God, you must not go to a man yard. You must not cheat on your fellow brothers in the church. You must not rob the collection. And a church that is dealing with God is supposed to make sure that what he's doing, when he preach and collect the collection, you have mad people on the road. You have sick people who need help. You have school who need help. And the pastor, they might keep the collection at the garden yard. Because Christians have a tendency to be hypocrite in the sight of God. And what are you now? When you work in the sight of God, you must not go to hobby a man yard. You must not cheat on your fellow brothers in the church. You must not rob the collection. And a church that is dealing with God is supposed to make sure that what he's doing, when he preach and collect the collection, you have mad people on the road. You have sick people who need help. You have school who need help. And the pastor, they might keep the collection at the garden yard. I want the collection to do something beneficial to the country and to the poorer class people. And until that time, I am not a Christian, I am a man of God. I am far from church but closer to God. In 1999, people, Ninja Man played a role in a Jamaican movie titled Third World Cup. Third World Cup 
was an action movie, you know what I mean? With a whole heap of crime in it. You get me as a people, it was a crime filled Jamaican movie where really I show how people live in a Jamaican and the ghetto. And it also I like the challenges where police have to function in the ghetto communities. You get me as a people, it was a very it was a hit movie, one of the most popular Jamaican movies back in that time. And up to today, day, Third World Cup is still a relevant movie to Jamaicans now. Ninja Man was also featured in a couple of other movies like Jamaican Dan and Gangsters Paradise. Those movies didn't hit as much as Third World Cup. After a while, Ninja Man come back out of church and Ninja Man start to actually burn out the church people him and say no really like what going to church to the pastor I take a collection money and so on. Ninja Man said he was a man of God but he was not a Christian. I understand people because he said the church people him are hypocrite and so on and so forth. So Ninja Man leave the church and come back in a dance hall and start to do him thing hardcore same way. Start to keep stage show and so on and so forth. You know what I mean people? In the sign to and big label at town, down sound records and him there do some Work with them, you get the mass of people. But in March 2009, things started to go downhill very fast for Ninja Man, as him and his son Janil was arrested and charged for the murder of Ricardo Jans, which occurred on Mall Road in Kingston. And you know, Mall Road and Ninja Man stronghold. After spending some time in custody, Ninja Man was granted bail in the sum of two million Jamaican dollars. After being granted bail. Ninja Man went back to court on July 15, 2012, where at least 58 jurors were scheduled to be present. But of that number, only 15 jurors were present. So, you know, another date had to be set. So, the trial never did go on the time of the trial, it put off to a later date. Because of all these legal troubles and back and forth, Ninja Man had parted ways with Down Sound Records and had started his own recording label and studio known as. Picture Frame Studio located in Blackwood Terrace, Kingston. So Ninja Man did I do him one thing and I keep him show them, you know what I mean? And I make a little money see him and things are going for Ninja Man. But you know people, Ninja Man always have this murder case a loom, you know what I mean, over him head. So on November 20, 2017, on the conclusion of Ninja Man and his co-accused murder trial. Ninja Man and all his co-accused were found guilty of the 2009 murder of Ricardo Johnson. On the 18th of December 2017, Ninja Man was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after he has spent 25 years in prison. Ninja Man is more talented than the average dancehall artist by far, especially back in his time with the type of music that was being produced back then. You understand people, Ninja Man stood out amongst the crowd. You get me as a people, but Ninja Man never having priorities straight. Ninja Man never did know say you cannot be an artist and be a bad man at the same time. You get me? If you're going to be a business person, you have to be a business person where you do business. If you're going to be a criminal, you have to go be a criminal. You understand? There's no way of mixing both. Especially the fact that Ninja Man find himself involved in a cocaine. You understand? I take crack. That's a recipe for disaster. As a person who supposed to at least see what crack cocaine do to other people who abuse it, Ninja Man should have never find himself get caught up in a crack cocaine as an entertainer. You get me as a people. Sometimes you can't try if you get too high. You see me as a ninja? Yeah. That I wanna, you don't fall. You know what I mean? That mash up your judgment. You drink, you smoke weed, and you smoke crack. You had too much things were wrong at the same time. And you know, say, the creator not really to, to believe in them, something. Them. And that's one of the reasons because you forget yourself and them big problem there. Because even though you see you done with it and so on and so forth, the movements where you make afterwards, the cause of inner the problem where you not know, would I suggest uh, you still did involved involve with them type of thing there. You get to me as a ninja. But as I said, the most important thing is you still have life, you know what I mean? And you can still make a change within yourself as a person. But as it relates to your music, your music should be bigger. With the level of talent where Ninja Man up, Ninja Man should have been one of the biggest dancehall artists in the world with a whole heap of accolades for sure. So yeah man, Ninja Man achieved this, Ninja Man achieved that because you had the talent to take it there. 
see him like Shabba Rankin. Remember, you know, you, Shabba Rankin has strength and help bring him to the forefront. And Shabba Rankin put himself on a level where Shabba Rankin can actually chuckle and Shabba not kill up himself. Ninja Man could have done even better. And Super Cat himself, same tell Ninja Man that. You get me as a people, so I don't like saying Ninja Man never did know, say, him could have reached to them heights. Eh? Instead, him in a prison cell now in a regret, say, understand people, because of one stupid decision. Anyway, people, leave your, leave your opinion in the comment section. You can like, subscribe, share. Peace.